1995. I was a year old at this time, and as many babies, I'm pretty curious. So, my dad was in the Navy, and he had a whole bunch of friends, and one of his friends was actually a pilot, and he let my mom and dad, and they brought me along, and he showed them an F-14. Little did my mom and dad know that when they put me in this F-14, uh, the ejection seat was live. So, one curious pull and I would have been sent into the air. <laughs> this is my first introduction into the world of machines. Fast forward a couple years and I'm in middle school and I loved building Legos. I was so into it and I just loved doing it. When my middle school offered a robotics course, I was hooked. I was ecstatic. My partner and I had gone through this of course, uh, about halfway through the year, and there was nothing left for us to do. Then fast forward more, another couple of years, and I'm coming to Greens Farms Academy, and I wanted to continue this interest. And I started to incorporate it into my academics. And this is when I took a science research course and started a proposal on building a research project for a humanoid robotic arm that would have the similar force to weight ratio as that of an actual human arm. And then I thought, what else could be done? So I started the GFA Robotics Club. And we got organized into this, or we got into this organization called FIRST. And FIRST is a nonprofit organization that inspires the creativity and ingenuity of young minds around the world. And it's a really cool organization. It has multiple robotics championships, namely one that is in St. Louis that's the world championship for everybody that competes. And the GFA Robotics team had an interesting experience last year. <coughs> what ended up happening was, uh, due to availability issues, we had to go to Philly in order to compete. And the night before the competition, we had our robot, it was functioning, and it was able to compete. But we wanted to make it a little bit better, so we tried to make one change to it. Two minutes later, the entire robot is in pieces. So we decided to pack up all those pieces and drive on down to Philly. We got there, it was about midnight. Fortunately for us, the hotel manager let us use the lobby in order to build our robot. I glance at the clock, what I think is two minutes later, it's three in the morning. I had no idea how this had happened. So I decided to sit back and look around. And what I thought was, where else would I rather be than at a, in a hotel lobby in the middle of Pennsylvania right now? I wasn't tired, I wasn't thinking about what tomorrow would be like. I was just in the moment trying to get this robot built. Five in the morning rolls around, it's still not built. We, we don't know what we're gonna do. We go through breakfast, all I have is some black coffee to run on. We get to the competition, Two minutes before we're supposed to compete, it finally gets done. We're all exhausted, but we really don't care. We finally got the robot done, and we compete that day. Then this year is when robotics really started to take a whole different turn. What ended up happening was we had the FTC championship here at GFA, and a whole bunch of people came together. There was over 20 teams from four different states that came here to share their love of robots and compete. I'm here I'm getting interviewed by Fox 5 News Connecticut, who later aired the story on the news. And what better way to reach out to the masses than the news? And even the governor came, and he wanted to inspire young minds to create these robots. But the real experience for me in all of this was robotics is more than just actually building something. You start to create a community and you start to feel what other people have and what other people have to offer for this insane, fun activity that you love doing. And in closing, what wouldn't have, uh, this wouldn't have been able to happen had it not been for the amazing support from friends and family. Thank you very much. <laughs>